Hey everyone, I wanted to take a moment to say thank you so much for all of the support and say hello to all of our new listeners. We've been able to see we continue to grow this channel and that's thanks to you. And so I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who supports us and hello to all of the new listeners. If you guys are brand new, go back. We have over 150 episodes of where I was a personal trainer to all the way to how I'm a regional sales manager now running the whole Western United States in under three years. It's been an awesome journey and we've been able to help so many people. If you guys don't know, we have a course where our average student is breaking in in 8.2 weeks at $94,478. We last month got 10 people hired in 10 days. Absolutely amazing. And also this week, we got three people hired all over 100K. It has been an absolutely amazing journey. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who trusts me to be a part of it. The one thing I do just want to mention to you guys, I hope you know this is all about providing value to you. It's why we have over 150 plus episodes all the day in the life of a medical device sales rep vlogs and manager. And we just want to continue to help you guys reach your goals. And so if you need any help, feel free to reach out to us, new to medical device sales or Jacob McLaughlin on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn, you're definitely going to need one. So go make sure you make one. But today's episode, it's all about providing value. And we are so honored to actually get a recruiter from one of the top recruiting firms who helps place reps, especially in startups, and where they've been able to also have a lot of success. Ryan is going to be our guest today, and you will hear on the podcast, Ryan has gone from being a rep, a president club winner, to being a manager, a sales trainer worldwide, to now placing people in top stop, top companies. So I just wanted to say I'm so excited to have you here. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out and I hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome back to New to Medical Device Sales and First Year In. I am your host, Jacob McLaughlin, and today we have a very special guest, somebody who has not only experience in medical device sales as an actual rep, a leader, but also in the recruiting world. And so today we get the pleasure of having Ryan Blasco from the Mullins Group join us and be able to share some tips on what he did to have success inside the industry, but not only there, what he looks for in candidates and how he gets candidates placed. So Ryan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Jacob. It's uh, It's been a while since we first met and uh, we've been trying to get this on the books for, for months and months now. So thanks for making the time. No, it's it's always great. And thank you to making the time because as two busy individuals, you know how it is. And we just try to make it work. So glad we can finally get it going. But for our listeners, that was a very quick, short intro to who you are. Can you kind of go into a little more detail about who you are and your experience of being, you know, in medical device sales as an actual rep, moving up all the ranks, having a lot of success, president club winner to now you're placing those people? Sure, absolutely. So my career started in 2008 in med device, um, so quite a while ago. Uh, company was Boston Scientific. I was working at uh, Cintas previously, and we can get into some of those uh, companies that are traditional feeder companies into med device. But certainly, I was there for almost five years and got a phone call and um, decided to take the interview and got hired on at Boston. Spent the next decade there, so carried the bag as a territory manager, a field sales trainer. Uh, ended up winning sales trainer of the year. So that was special because I got to coach and mentor a lot of young people in the organization. Uh, then moved to um, the Boston area and ran global training for them. So Europe, Middle East, Africa. That was my responsibility. And then my teammates, uh, they handled Asia Pacific. Um, so did that for about three years and then took on a role as a regional sales director for Indiana, Ohio, and West Virginia, uh, where I was lucky enough to have a region of the year team, uh, territory manager of the year, so just a very special time in my career. Um, so after that, I left the med device space for a couple of years, went into venture capital and private equity. Uh, company was called Diligence IT. I was a vice president of business development. And following that, I got uh, got the itch to get back into med device. So went to be a director of sales at Cardiovascular Systems when they launched their coronary atherectomy device. And uh, last but not least, uh, the company that pulled me away from cardiovascular system, CSI, uh, was called Ambu. And I got to work with a lot of my friends and colleagues from Boston Scientific uh, as we launched single-use scopes to the market. I was the national sales director there. Um, so that was my, my med device career. And the way I kind of floated into executive search uh, was I, I would always have conversations with Joe Mullings and Holly Scott, the team at the Mullings Group. And and they said, Ryan, why don't you just come here and build out commercial teams for startups? 
And I said, you know, I've never really thought about that. What would that look like? Yeah. And here we are today. And uh, it's been quite a ride. I've been there a year and a half now. And I have to tell you, the transition from med device to executive search, it, it's not that difficult of a transition if you've had the experiences that I've had over my career that you know, I've been very fortunate with. So that's a, uh, that's a little bit about me. And uh, well, you guys can see why I passed it back over to Ryan, because that is a resume that goes super long, a lot of success, absolutely amazing to see, you know, going from that traditional B2B sales, right? CentOS, like you said, those, those feeder companies that we all hear that you need to go get that experience to all the way to running actual regions, actually running sales training for massive organizations and being able to go throughout the world to where you're at now. It's been really cool to just see your progression, but there's no no surprise that you've been successful in each step because it's it's what you preach it's what you teach like the more i got to know you it's been an absolute pleasure because of how you just handle yourself and i i look as you as somebody to learn from and it's been so much fun but to your point um when you got that call from a recruiter mm-hmm. and you're at a big company you know that's what that's how our paths uh first crossed and how yeah. i met you know being at a big company and getting getting that call and just being open that was i think the big sure. thing was being open but being able to to kind of learn about those opportunities now to, to really dive into it so the listeners can really feel it, I think one thing that we can hit real quick is what you said is we hear all the time in medical device sales, hey, you need those feeder companies, hey, the ADPs, the CentOS, th- those smaller B2B, or not smaller, but the B2B uh, organizations to get into med device sales. Mm-hmm. Now, this is where I'm always a little different. Why people listen right. to us is I'm the exact opposite. I say you don't need any of that. We've helped over 1,200 people break in in the last two and a half years without any of that. But from your experience, what did you gain from there? And then why do you think there is that stigma of you have to have this B2B sales experience before we even look at you in the med device world? A couple of things and, and congratulations, by the way. I mean, helping that many people break into an incredible field like med device. I mean, that's that's amazing, right? It is life changing, not just helping others, but the financial impact it can have for somebody and their family. So that's awesome. Um, I'll say two things. So number one, you know, med, med device doesn't teach sales, typically. It teaches anatomy, disease states, treatment options. So most companies prefer to hire somebody with a sales background. Now, the training's getting better and better, especially at the large strategics, right? You were at Medtronic, large company. They've invested probably in the challenger sale, different types of sales models to complement their anatomy, disease state training. But that's not the case at a lot of companies, especially at startups, right? You're at a startup now. Yep. So they wanted to hire somebody that was a pro. So we work with roughly 150 million in less in revenue is sort of our sweet spot, series A, series B. And they say, hey, Ryan, we're ready to build out our commercial team. And typically it'll start with an individual contributor. And then if they do well and they, they have leadership in their background, they'll get tapped on the shoulder to be the first leader in the organization. Um, so that that's one way to look at it is, hey, they go after these quote feeder companies um, because they're hiring people that already know how to do the sales side of it. Yep. Um, now, the other the other part that we discussed is the larger companies now have that really progressive training because they've refined it over a period of years. And startups don't have that luxury, right? You're everything. You're upstream marketing. You're downstream. Yep. You're sales, right? You're, you're operations. <laughs> like you're creating your own marketing collateral over at FedEx office. I mean, it is a grassroots effort. So a little bit different scenario. And that I would say those are the differences. Yeah, no. And, that, and that's a great point. And to your point real quick, I do have to just touch on is like, that's what's been the most rewarding of this is the financial aspect of uh, our people like today. Um, just got a text. We got a girl who was in marketing outside of medical device sales. She was making $52,000 a year. She just mm-hmm. called us. She Her base is 90K. Her app plan is 130. That's the cool thing for everybody listening is what this can offer. And not yep. only, again, not the financial spot is you're actually selling a, a product or a device that's going to change somebody's life with that. And so that's really cool. But going back to, yeah, that's what they're looking for all the time. And that's that's our big conversation is, you know, how do you beat out someone who has the the B2B sales experience or that actual sales experience? And and what we talk about is the selling of yourself, right? And I know I've sent you some candidates of people who might not have that, but it's really making sure that they bring everything that they're looking for and being able to handle those objections in that yeah. world um, and, and going into that medical device sales. Now, with working with so many startups, what have you seen as 
somebody who places these people. But what do you yeah. see these startups really looking for in their candidates compared to maybe like a bigger company for like a Medtronic or a and j Because mm -hmm. it's a bit, like you said, there's a very different looking person that they're looking at. Yeah, I mean, right now I'm working with an Australian company, uh, a startup, and they look for four attributes, which I love. It's drive, intelligence, uh, organization, and adaptability. So when you think about that in your personal and professional life, you know, you have tons of examples, right? I, I know your story. I know about your drive, your adaptability, your organization, your intelligence, right? Because you, you've, you've come up from the bottom and, and really scraped and clawed your way to the top. And that's what it takes. I'm a big Notre Dame football fan. I grew up in South Bend, Indiana, and there's a movie called Rudy. And anybody that's ever seen the movie Rudy knows about the underdog, right? The person that doesn't belong on the field with all the all-stars, but has a bigger heart than everybody else. And that's what it takes, whether you are at one of these feeder companies or you want to go right from being a trainer like you into med device. You have to have a big heart, and then that has to show through in the interview process. So the biggest sale of your life is when you sell yourself, or I like to say, educate others on who you are. And, and that's, that's really what it's about. A lot of people say, well, Jacob, I can't talk to this person or Ryan, I don't want to talk to this person. They don't check a lot of the boxes. And I say, just meet this individual. They've never done anything in their lives that they weren't successful at because they have no quit in them. Yep. And even if they have to start at the bottom, is like a clinical specialist and work their way up to an associate and then their way up to a territory manager. These are the people that are eventually leading companies. And, um, you know, that's, that's your story. That's my story. I mean, I know so many stories like that. Yeah, no. And, and that's such a good point. I just always want the other listeners to hear that because I can say it from a million times, but right. you guys, this is somebody who literally places people every single day in this industry. And so again, it just goes back to that, that hunger, that drive, and you might not have what the they're traditionally looking for, but why should they choose you? Why are you the best candidate in this position? And I think one thing I really wanted to touch on today, because one thing that you at the Mullins group and you just personally in your own brand, you're great at is utilizing LinkedIn and being able to differentiate yourself in that world. But I know that's a big thing with the med device sales, right? We have social media everywhere, but I always tell people LinkedIn is your spot. That is where you're living if you're trying to get into these in this industry. So when you're working with candidates or you're looking at people, what is it like, what are you looking at as a recruiter on their LinkedIn and possibly like the resume that you're kind of looking to fit people, whether it's a, it's a brand new person coming into the industry, or it's somebody who's been at a med device company for several years. And now they're making that move to another company. Yeah, absolutely. A couple things. First, you know, your resume is only seen by the people you send it to. So very limited audience and everybody can see your LinkedIn. So make sure your resume and your LinkedIn match. Whatever bullets you have under each role you've done along the way, put those same bullets on your LinkedIn. And the beauty of LinkedIn is it's it's interactive, right? So you can you can attach media. So if there's pictures of you on stage at Medtronic, for example, or you have an award or an, a crystal, you take a picture of that and you attach it. You know, back in the and I'm gonna date myself here, but back in the early 2000s, we had a thing called brag books, and you would take a brag book to an interview, and it was it's it was analog, it was pages of rankings, right? It was, it was pictures. It was, it was a brag book. Yep. Um, we don't have that anymore. So, and, and there's a fine line between taking credit for what you've done and, and being cocky, right? So you, you want to be confident in how you approach the opportunity. So I would say, number one, make sure your resume and your LinkedIn match. And for goodness sakes, have a professional photo. Yeah. If it's a selfie in the car, that's not what you want. Um, so, we all have iPhones or, or, or Google Pixels, right? They have a thing called portrait mode. Put on a sport coat, put on a nice suit jacket, whatever outfit you need to look professional and have somebody take your picture in portrait mode. It blurs out the background. It's perfect. You don't have to go get a professional headshot, right? You can do it with your phone. So that that's the, the LinkedIn, you know, basics. Um, beyond that, I, I like to say that, you know, there, there's three things. You can like something on LinkedIn, you can comment, or you can share, right? Like, comment, or share, or, or they call it reposting. Mm -hmm. So I used to tell my sales teams, likes are lazy, comments are comfortable, sharing sells. And what do I mean by that? So if you like something, that's great. Somebody will see that you like that your name may show up on their feed. If you comment, 
even though it's comfortable, what it can do is it can show your subject matter expertise. So if you're following a company, for example, let's just say it's Medtronic, because that's your former company, and you've got one of your students looking into getting a role at Medtronic. Number one, they should be listening to all Medtronic's earning calls. So they know what's Medtronic's priority, what's important to them. Where are they putting all their money? Where do they see the growth? And start commenting in LinkedIn and showing your subject matter expertise because you've done that market research, okay? And then you'll get to the point where you know so much about that company, it's as if you're an employee there, and then you reshare a post of somebody that's in influential, possibly a hiring manager. So what happens then? Suddenly your name is always in their feed and they're going to say, who the heck is this Jacob McLaughlin? Oh, this guy's a personal trainer. How the heck does he know so much about our business? Yep. I mean, he knows he knows our cumulative an annual growth rate. He knows each division of our company, whether it's diabetes or OBGYN, what we're doing. How does he know these things? Wow, he's a subject matter expert and he wants to break into med device. I can probably get this guy for cheap. Let's interview him, right? Yep. That's how it works. I I'm not kidding. So we have a thing called the network effect, right? Where you could call a friend of a friend and they could bring you in. That's great. Those are very limited opportunities. So take control of your own career. Yep. The last thing I'll say about that um, is if you've applied for a job on LinkedIn and your phone's not ringing, don't expect it to. It says how many people have applied for that job. Sometimes it's four or five, 800 people, right? Yep. So how do you differentiate? Well, it says who posted the job, usually an internal talent acquisition person, usually um, the hiring manager, right? You call the 800 number, the switchboard picks up, you ask that for that person by name and you introduce yourself. Guess what you've just done? You've done something that 99 out of 100 people will not do. And that's the key is to differentiate yourself. Otherwise, you're just going to be a, a, a small fish in a huge pond and never get noticed. But if you take that step, you'll, you'll be a big fish in a tiny pond and boom, you're going to get that interview. So okay. that's my advice. on that. I love that because that's the big thing we talk about is how do, how do you differentiate yourself? And, and the one thing I always bring it back to is for our people, when I'm coaching them, they will think about medical device sales as like trigonometry. It's trigonometry. And they're like, I can't figure this out. Oh my gosh. And then I'm like, let's talk about dating. And the moment I bring it to scenarios of dating, they're like, I got it. Right. And so the reason I just say that is I always laugh when we see the, the selfies or the no profiles. And I'm like, guys, let's say you're dating someone or you're on a dating website or whatever. And when was the last time you're on Instagram and you had somebody with two followers with no page or no picture, like try to follow you. When do you accept them? They're like, I never do. And I'm like, that's what you're doing on LinkedIn though. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I love that just the little steps that you guys can take to do that. But the second part on that is exactly what Ryan said of just how do you stand out? Right. Being able, everybody, I hear this all the time, Jacob, I applied to a bunch of positions. You and 500 other people did the exact same thing. What, what makes you different? And most of the time, these are the same people who don't have sales experience, don't have clinical experience. So I'm like, they are, you're already 0 for 2 on the biggest two things that they're looking for. So sure. what are you doing through that process to actually make yourself stand out? Like you just said, by learning and becoming an expert at a company that you want to be a part of, by yeah. when you are networking and reaching out, like this is what we always talk about is, don't everyone ask for jobs. When you reach out to somebody in med device sales, they already know what you want. Mm -hmm. How about you just come to learn? How about you come make a real good relationship and you don't ask for anything because the I'll say this on in this podcast so people can hear it because we say it in our course all the time. It's like the pretty girl at the bar. If then the, the pretty girl is all these reps in medical device sales. All they get on is hit on all day and having people ask them for their jobs. No pr different than the girl who gets, hey, compliments and gets a drink. But then if you're the one guy who says, goes and grabs a drink, she's like, aren't you going to buy me a drink? And you're like, no, why would I do that? And you walk away. Who is the only person she's going to think about? Most likely you. It's no different. I can, I can tell you're at the dating age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we're still in the single world. But as I always right. just tell our people is it's the same thing in med device sales. Every single person that reaches out to me, hey, Jacob, I'm looking for a job. Hey, Jacob, let me know if you know of anything open. Hey, Ryan, do you have any positions that I, I can have? Sure. Like, here's the thing. You, yes, you do. That's literally what you do for a living. Yes, we know about positions, but what most people do is they do it wrong. And so right. I think that's the biggest thing is like you're saying is, hey, don't sit here, don't wait for it, and don't just be la lazy. Most of you think by just sending a uh, message, 
that's good enough. Right. It's not good enough. It's the bare minimum. It's no different than where I'm at now. If I go to my CEO and say, hey, sorry, Elliot, I sent out 100 emails, but nobody responded back. Mm -hmm. I'll get attacked, you know, like that's not that's just the bare minimum. They, all you did was send an email. So that's the biggest thing is what are you doing to differentiate yourself throughout that process? Make sure you stand out and can actually provide value yes. when they look at you. That's the biggest thing. So I really loved what you just said there about LinkedIn, how you're standing out. Now, when you're placing these reps, and I want to just hit on both in because we do both with new to medical. And now we have the first year in. And, and so it's working with both people just trying to break in and people that are maybe in three, four, five years. And now they're trying to make that jump or even a year. And it's like, what do you see with your candidates every single time that you're like, okay, I'm willing to take this person on to even try to help them? Because I know you're not going to just take anybody who messages you and reaches out to you. What is what are you looking for in those attributes of this somebody that you want to help place? And then what does that kind of process look like for the interview process, especially because I know a med tech startup is going to be way different than going through a Smith and nephew interview process. Really? I look for somebody who has a good story and somebody who's willing to tell me that story. Um, I look for relational over transactional. And, and that's the thing, right? I'm, I'm on 15 minute calls all day, every day. I mean, I knock out 30 to 40 of those calls a day, put in 12 hour days. I mean, we all do. Um, I think our videos freeze out a little bit. Yeah, yeah we're, we're still good. We got the sound good still. All right, good. Uh, so what I look for is somebody who has a story that sticks. Um, there's a book called Stories That Stick, and, and, and we can talk about that later if we have time. But certainly, I'm not going to remember you if it's a transactional relationship. But if you find a way to build rapport with me, and it becomes relational, and you can do that in 15 minutes. You know how you do that? You show more interest in the other person than yourself. That's it. So myself, Devin, Joe, Holly, Matt, everybody at our firm, we get bombarded daily with people who are wanting. I want this. I want that. I deserve this. I deserve that. You're right. You probably do. But so do all the other people that we're talking to. So how do you separate yourself? You don't make it about you. You make it about the company you're pursuing. You make it about the people that are trying to help you. You know, make make my job easy, right? Take take the advice I'm giving you. Make your resume and your LinkedIn match. You know, call the switchboard of these companies and ask for the hiring manager by name. You know, let's let's work together to get you noticed, not just here's my resume, get me a job. It's not how it works. Yeah. <laughs> It's not how it works. As right? many of you people think it does work that way. That is not how it does. It does not work that way. So um, that's that's really the biggest piece of advice I can give your listeners is don't make it about you. As soon as you make it about you, th think about when you're being sold anything, right? What do you feel like? You, you feel like a victim almost yeah. like, all right, here, here comes the big ask. They're going to ask me to buy something, right? Nobody likes to be sold right? But people like it when it becomes their idea to buy something. Mm -hmm. So think about how you're influenced today as a consumer, right? Whether it's on Instagram, TikTok, even, even LinkedIn. Yep. It's the same way that you need to influence your own career. Yeah, that's so good. I, I love that. And that's, that's the thing that people just, we, we talk about that in the course all the time is it's never about you. Because even when we were going through the interview process, I have this so many times with our students, Jacob, a regional manager told me they were going to get back to me on Tuesday. It's Wednesday. Oh my gosh, did I build it? And I'm like, guys, they're running a territory. They have a team. There's back orders. There's everything else. You're the last person on their mind. Like give them a couple days. And if you don't hear back by next week, then you can do another follow-up, right? And so many times we've done that. And then three days later they come, but it's such a good point that everyone needs to hear is we come from a place and it's just the way of the world right now is everybody wants what they want and they feel like they deserve it and they feel like hey i'm entitled to this and i think that's the biggest thing that i see with our people who get hired the fastest and when i say fastest i mean three five weeks whatever it is is mm -hmm. they don't feel like they deserve anything and that's mm -hmm. the thing i've i try to continue to stay at is even though we've had success I, i'm not where i was th five years ago it's continuing to remember those days remembering mm -hmm. where I came from, because yeah, maybe life's changed a little bit, but it's, it can go away. I, I just always have the world of it could go away tomorrow and whatever yeah. it does. Right. And so I have to earn it every single day. Um, cause it, tomorrow is not promised and neither is anything else. And so 
I really, really love that advice. Now, the one thing I really wanted to make sure that we touch on is you're somebody with so much experience of actual success, president club winner, running regions, actually getting uh, awards at regions. What did you do through your career that you felt made made you have the success that you did? And then how you were able to climb that ladder of continuing to to grow through the ranks of medical device sales? Because that's a lot of the new listeners that reach out to me or even reps that are right now, they're two, three, five years in. Hey, I want to go to a sales trainer right now. Or hey, I want to move up. They all ask, how do I do that? And I, with someone like yourself who's done it, I'd love yeah. to hear how that kind of looked like your journey and what you felt helped you have success to grow there. And then when you knew it was the right time to go take those next steps and what kind of helped you in those processes. Mm -hmm. No, those are, those are things that a lot of people think about, right? Especially if they're ambitious. So what you have to think of first is how can I give, give, give and expect nothing back in return? Because eventually that becomes your reputation. And then you have to ask for the things that you want. And you really need a leader that you can partner with that has your back. And what I mean by that is, you know, I worked with a lot of other leaders and, you know, I saw how they ran their teams and, you know, they would bang on a desk and manage from behind a desk with a spreadsheet. And that's great. Um, but people follow what they see. Right. And there's a great book called It's Your Ship. Um, and it, it talks about a subject I, I, I repurpose a lot. But basically, if people don't weigh in, they won't buy in. So I've, I've used, you know, survey monkey for anonymous surveys on my teams, right? You know, talking about everything from my leadership style to comp plans, you know, how can I help change the direction of your job and what's going on at this company? Like I'm here for you. Yep. How can I re remove the administrative burden so you can go out and do what you're being paid to do, which is sell, right? So my focus as a leader was always on, is this a revenue generating activity? Um, so I, I would have my team read a lot of books, not just sales books, but business books. And one of my favorites, um, Tim Ferriss, he has a book called The 4-Hour Workweek. Yep. Uh, you're a personal trainer, so The 4-Hour Body, I'm sure you've read that. Yep. But he, he has a phrase, he says, am I being productive or just active? Mm -hmm. And when you think about that, right, you, you're, you're at Innovus now. You yep. can send out a million emails. You can spend your time doing expense reports. But no, none of the magic happens until Jacob McLaughlin is sitting in front of a customer that can decide to buy an Innovis simulator. Yep. That's it. So are your activities aligning with that? If yep. they're not, they're non-revenue generating activities, right? So yep. you have to focus on being productive, not just active. So that's how I ran my teams. I would remove the administrative burden. I would get them from point A to point B as quickly as possible. And, and that's how we were successful. And then from the, the sales trainer part of things, again, you just raise your hand and say, hey, I know I'm not a trainer yet. I know you pay your trainers. I know people have to be promoted into training. Um, but if you'd like to pilot what it's like to have somebody train with me, put them in the car with me for a week. Yep. Or let me come to the corporate office. You don't have to pay me. It's the same thing with the interview process, Jacob. Show the hiring manager you can do the job before you have the job. Yep. One of the most impressive interviews I ever had I was interviewing this this uh, this female candidate and she had no background and she came to me in the interview process, second interview and said, here's all the doctors I talked to about the product and they already want to meet and see a demo on the product and whether you hire me or not, here's the doctor's names and here's when here's the times they have. What? Like that's what it's about, right? Yep. So I don't have to worry because that's the concern of a hiring manager. Yep. So I'm taking a risk on a young person outside the industry are they going to make me look bad? Yep. Because if they don't hit their number, I don't hit my number. That affects my income, which affects my family. Yep. And if you're going to make me choose you over my family, not going to happen. Yep. But if you show me something like that in the interview process, I haven't trained you yet. I haven't, we haven't done field ride. You haven't went through the anatomy disease state, but you're so confident and you want to work for this company so bad that you've already lined up meetings to demo the product guess what? You made my decision to hire you a hell of a lot easier. Yeah, a thousand percent. I, I love what you just said. So that's one thing that I've been saying since I started this is do the job to get the job. Because that was the only thing that gave me a shot. Mm -hmm. When they when they said, Jacob, you're a personal trainer, you don't know how to prospect. You're a personal trainer, you don't know how to do sales. All that stuff I had to show through the process that I, I did, even though it wasn't the traditional what they're looking for. And to your point, and that's the biggest thing I think that 
always comes back to it is that person went above and beyond, left no stone unturned and was okay if it didn't work out. Like this is the other thing is she was like, I'm just here to help. And like you said, provide value. And that's the biggest thing I think, even if you're that person who's a sales trainer, what do we always think? I need first, I need first. And I think about this because I get to work with a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs. And the, the coolest thing is when you talk to them, we have it all backwards where people want raises. Well, they want you to pay me more so I can then do more. But the opposite, I, I talk to them all the time and they're like, if they just did way more, I actually would just pay them way more because they've showed the value. And that's one, I can't remember where I was talking to somebody about, but it was just talking about, I don't care if you're a janitor. And I think it was Eric Thomas, but I was like, I don't care if you're a janitor. You need to be so good at being a janitor that you're irreplaceable, that even if things go happen, they're going to find a place to keep you. And that's yeah. been the biggest thing I've seen throughout these careers yeah. of talking to so many reps, because I've been on well over 10,000 calls in the last three years of just people and being able to see successful people. And it's all that it's, they don't sit there and be like, oh, I need this. It's how can I just go provide value? And if I don't get anything in return, hey, I'm just doing what who I truly am and yeah. not asking. And so I really appreciate you saying that because I that's the thing I love about you and like how you are is you're just real. And that's what most people we don't have. We want to tell you the here, this looks good or hey, do this. It's it's just being a good human being. It's working hard and and just doing the work and not expecting anything. And guess what? If you do that long enough, probably good things are gonna come from it. Well, you have to be resilient, Jacob. I mean, we're all gonna eat a little crap in this yep. life. And is how do you respond to that, yeah. right? So, I, I mean, I've had plenty of peaks and I've had plenty of valleys. And I, I was talking to a guy the other day and he said, Ryan, life is full of battles and life is full of blessings. And if you just focus on the battles and get lost in those, you'll never see the blessings that are right in front of you. Mm -hmm. uh, so losing a job can be a blessing. Yeah. But if you look at it as, woe was me, why did this happen to me? And you live in that space, you'll never see the blessing in it, right? Yeah. And I know so many people that they had that door shut and they thought their life was over and they didn't get after it and, and they never recovered. Yep. And then other people had that door shut and they looked at it in a, in a positive way and said, you know what? I never would have done this on my own, but now I'm forced to and, and I'm going to get after it yep. and have the career they always wanted, right? And it, again, your job isn't who you are. It's what you do. And wow. that's my advice to everybody I talk to is, listen, don't tie your identity to your job. Yep. Now, can, can you can you be a powerful spokesperson and, and do all the things you want to do and, and change people's lives in med device? Yes. But if med device goes away, you can't let your life be so tied to that, that you're not a productive individual in society, right? Yep. You just, you don't want to falter and spin out. So there's so many opportunities out there, but we have to stay laser focused on helping others. And, and that will in turn help you. Yep. I've never known anybody that went out and volunteered their, you know, their time, their talents, their, their treasure, right? The three T's and said, man, it felt really, really crappy to do that. Felt really bad helping people out and volunteering. So the more you focus on others, everything comes back to you. That's just the way the world works, yep. but you have to be willing to do that. And it's a lot easier to be selfish than it is to be selfless. Yeah. Oh, guys, please just go back and listen to the last 10 minutes of what Ryan has just been talking to because that is so good. And it, it's the part of one thing I think about this all the time, because you and I both are men of faith. And again, I always tell people you guys believe what you believe and you do your thing, but I believe in God and I don't believe there's any accidents on what happens. It's always a learning lesson for me. And the biggest thing is, is if I lost a job, or if something happened to me in my life, which it has, like Ryan said, you can either look at it and be woe is me and go back to why you're sh you should never be successful, or you can go with what am I learning in this? What's the opportunity ahead of me? And I say this to all of our candidates. And so hopefully this can be encouraging to you guys is it's pretty hard to lose when you just don't quit. That was why people always ask me, Hey, Jacob, how, how were you able to break in? How'd you talk to 3000 people? What it was because I didn't care if it took me two years, if it took me four years, I had put it in my head and I'm like, I'm going to get this done. And I'm, pr I'm pretty sure it's probably going to happen faster, but if it doesn't, this is what it's going to require. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would just encourage you all is so many of you feel anxiousness. So many of you feel like you're failing. So many of you feel like you're not good enough because you put these timelines on yourself and you're not accomplishing them. And guess what? It's all fake. You want, you want to know why I can say that? I do that. It's when my, when I'm with Elliot in the first three months, four months, and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm not doing this. He's like, mate, what are you worried about? Like, 
you're doing everything we're asking for it. Just like cut yourself some slack. It's when you guys are high achievers, you want to have success. You want to do it. And whether that's just because you want to prove yourself that you're good enough, prove that you're that there's a reason they're paying you or whatever it is, I'm just going to tell you and hopefully encourage you. If you just continue to do exactly what Ryan said is if you just continue to provide value, you work hard, that you continue with the end in mind, but you don't make it about you, you make it about them and you just don't quit. I don't care if it's med device sales or whatever you do in your life, you will be successful. It's just most people try to think on timelines of days and weeks instead mm -hmm. of actually months, years, and decades. Absolutely. Ryan, well, I really appreciate you taking time and just joining us today. Um, the one thing I want to just put out there is where can they find you? Where can people reach out to you? Because again, you do help people break into medical device sales. Now, this before we say that, this is what I am going to say to every single new listener. I promise you, if you are just going to blow up Ryan's email and just say, I want a job, he will not get back to you. Uh, as you can hear on this podcast, and I know, just so you all know, I know you guys do this from our other guests. So just make sure if you're going to be reaching out that you're doing it the right way. And also, again, Ryan may be able to help with more new people, but he he usually works with reps that are already in the industry, if I'm right. Is that correct? Yeah. And, and the challenge, Jacob, is we work with startups, you know, as yep. I mentioned. So these early stage emerging med tech companies, they want people that have the experience that they can have that are plug and play. They don't have the luxury of training people up because they haven't scaled their training yet. Yep. Right. So they have a product that they need to scale revenue quickly so they can go IPO or get acquired. Yep. Um, now, there are certain companies out there that will hire the B2B or take a chance on a young person. And, and Innovus is one of those. And yep. you've landed at a great company. Of course, you had the men device experience, but I just helped build out, uh, you know, product implementation managers um, or excuse me, program implementation managers, product implementation specialists for you guys. And part of those people were from your classes. Yep. Right. You know, they were students of yours. So it's just amazing how the world works if you're willing to put in the effort. You know, I have three kids, two boys and a girl. And my wife and I always say, we'll help you if you put in the effort. Yeah. But don't expect us to do everything for you. If we see the effort, we'll 100 percent support you. Um, but you have to put in the effort. So that would be my advice to your listeners. Put in the effort. Um, don't quit. Right. And, and keep listening. Because listening is learning. Yeah. And the more you talk, the less you learn. <laughs> I always have to work on that one. As you guys know, I do a podcast where I talk for 40 minutes. But uh, no, I really appreciate that. And again, Ryan, just thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I know you're extremely busy taking this on a weekend. Um, but again, just thank you for everything that you do. And again, so excited to see the success you guys are having at Mull the Mullins Group and, and just where you're at. And just want to say thank you to you. Because again, without you, I want to be where I'm at today. Um, and it's been such a pleasure. And also you're somebody that I know I can call and that you always keep me on my, my toes. And you also make sure that I'm not being that dumb, young, 28 year old, uh, kid that sometimes can happen. So I just always appreciate you and, and means the world to just have you on our podcast. Yeah. Happy to be on it. Um, you know, your listeners can follow us at the Mullings group. Uh, of course they can find me on LinkedIn. I'm not really a social media guy outside of LinkedIn. So that's where you'll find me, but, um, yeah, appreciate the time today. And, I really am proud of what you're doing and keep it up. Thank you so much. And if you guys are listening, if you can press that like and subscribe button, a five-star review helps us grow this channel. As you've heard, we've been able to help so many people be able to break into medical device sales. We actually got 10 people hired in 10 days just a couple of weeks ago. So it's just been a lot of fun. If you guys are really interested in breaking into medical device sales, our average person in 2023 is breaking in 8.2 weeks at $94,478. You guys can click the link below. You can reach out to us in LinkedIn, Jacob McLaughlin, or new to medical device sales on every social media. And we will see you on the next one.